Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. Yes, folks, we are here in Cooperstown, New York. In the backdrop, we have the Catskill Mountains, and I'm staying at the Red Carpet Inn Suites, and these people have been very hospitable to us since we've been here a little bit earlier in the week. And I am pleased to be joined by Mark Meriday. Mark Meriday is a very great guy because I had an opportunity to meet him on Twitter. We became instant friends, and he's been helping us promote a lot of our content videos and so forth. So when the opportunity presented itself that he was going to be in Cooperstown along with us, this was an absolute no-brainer. And Mark, welcome to the Sports Thank Exchange you, Mike. from Cooperstown, New York. My goodness. No traffic jams here, just a lot of territory and a lot of room to drive that even my cat Bucky and cat Boots could even drive this easily. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it's so beautiful here. Like, if you've never been here, put it on your bucket list if it wasn't on there and if it is on there make it a point to do it you know i mean this is just such a beautiful area there's there's so much here for and there's something for everybody even if you're not a baseball fan there's just there's something here for everybody you know what i realized here the last couple of days i never realized how many cider mills out here oh yeah and i know that they got wineries out here yeah. and more importantly the lakes that you have out here a lot lake ostego and there was another one i don't know off the top of my head but there's another lake out there. I'm not supposed to memorize lakes to it's baseball. It's okay. But boy, the scenery is unreal. You don't ever forget that. Of course, nowadays you got a camera phone, so you know, for about 12 days. No, 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 no. Everything is saved for you. Oh, I know. I mean, so here, here's what happened. When I told my wife, Candy, and we ended up going to the Field of Dreams last October 31st, I told her we were coming to Cooperstown this year now that she graduated from the Field of Dreams. Yeah. Needless to say, she's here, and of course, the timing that you're here is unbelievable. So, with that said, Mark, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little about what you do regularly? I know you and your wife are teachers. Yeah, my lovely wife, Terry, and I both teach. She's a college professor. She's been there for, oh gosh, uh, 25 years at her college, and she teaches uh, computer applications, things like that. So, uh, a necessary skill in today's world, there's no question about it. Uh, I'm a high school teacher, and it's... Uh, I love what I do, I love the kids, but it's grueling right now to be a high school teacher. I teach honors health classes and I teach uh, first aid classes. So, um, and my first aid classes are, are uh, based off of the American Red Cross. So I, I actually certify kids in uh, CPR, AED, and basic first aid for adults, children, and infants. So I send them out into the world to uh, be able to save lives. Do you ever get a lot of contact from these people when they come back to they do do they view you as like a mentor absolutely kind of absolutely it, it, last year was probably one of the greatest years I ever had teaching because my relationship with the kids and I, I don't know if this has something to do with COVID or what it was but my relationship with the senior class which was sophomores when we went out with COVID uh, was just so strong uh, strong to the degree that I actually attended graduation for the first time in years and um, it, it just makes such a such a difference to them. And I get emails. I'm friends with them on Facebook, Twitter, you know, uh, Snapchat, whatever. I, I, we maintain a relationship, and it's it's cool because I've influenced kids who are like, "Oh, Meriday, I took your class, and, and and now I decided to be an EMT. I decided to get into the medical field. I decided, you know, so it, it really makes me feel like um, like I make a difference in their life." I've always thought that the teaching profession is the most underrated profession on the planet. It's not like you're going in there to get a six-figure salary, but you probably get six-figure gratification when you do it, knowing the amount of lives that have been impacted. You know, I, I envy those individuals that ever go out there and want to teach. It's just unbelievable. They're, thankfully, at least they have pretty good benefits anyways, I would have seen yeah, you as know, well. Here's something people don't understand. Everybody says, oh, you get the summer off. I get the summer off without pay. Right? So right. I've got to orchestrate my money to be able to meet the needs of the summer. And part of the reason I got into teaching was to coach. I coached high school football. I coached track. I did a wealth of coaching. Um, but I got away from that as my kids got older. And then I maintained staying with my kids, doing things with my kids. I just felt like it was important to be able to do that. And I, and I feel blessed to be able to choose this career and be able to have the life I have as a teacher, to be honest with you. Well, I think your students should be blessed to have a guy like you that's a role model and a mentor to go out there and guide them with integrity, passion, and you got to love all your kids. And it's like you've adopted a lot of kids, haven't you? I have. I have probably way too many uh, mouths to feed, but we still feed. And we actually, I, I keep, 
ironically you say that I keep a closet in my in my classroom filled with uh, for snacks for them you know they're high school kids they're growing and they eat a lot so I always have something there for them to eat and uh, at lunchtime I uh, this year I'm actually putting a microwave in a little refrigerator in there for them so they can leave their lunch or heat their lunch up or whatever I, I try to make it as uh, comfortable as possible for them what sport did you enjoy coaching the most? Uh, I, definitely football. I was a head high school football coach. Uh, I coached as an assistant. I, I did all that stuff. Um, I miss it, but not enough to the degree that I want to give up my family time. It's just, it's a ton of time. And if you want to be successful at it, and you can ask anybody anywhere, they'll tell you the same thing. To be successful at it, you've got to, you've got to be willing to make sacrifices with family, with other things that you want to do. I mean, my wife will go into the story if you had her here and tell you about how on Thanksgiving Day one year, we were getting phone calls from a family about their kid getting recruited. And I'm like, hey, it's Thanksgiving Day, you know, give me a break. Can I have one day a year? You know, but it's a, it's thankless from that perspective, but I love coaching it. I'll give your wife a whole lot of credit. It seems like she's involved with you and a lot of what you're doing too. Yeah. You know, like my wife is helping me with what we do. Isn't yeah. it great to have a partner that supports your passion and your energy, that has your back, that you always can run things by? Because I know I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without mine. The way I see it is if you don't have um, a give and take, if you don't have uh, an understanding of what each other's goals are in life, then you're not going to stay together long. That's the bottom line. Folks, I'm not a marriage counselor. I don't look like one. I'll never pretend to be one. I don't know about this 50-50, everybody give it 110%. If you have compatible interests and you go out there and have each, uh, have a lot of fun, to me, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. And I, I, you don't need Sigmund Freud to go ahead and define what a marriage is. Of no. course, we're not talking Hollywood marriages where you got the average is about, I don't know what the over-under is between three and 10, depending on the celebrity. Yeah, yeah. You know, not all of us want to go to divorce court nine million times. Not going to get off two subjects. But at least one thing, one of the many things we have in common is you have a great partner. And I'm very fortunate to have mine. Yep. So with that said, let's go on to the next thing, Mark, and that's your podcast. You know, tell me about this because, again, folks, I reiterate, I met Mark Merde, okay, yeah. on Twitter. And when you meet friends on social media, yes, we are human beings. We ultimately have a chance to meet face to face if it works out. So now I want to hear about your podcast. My podcast. Okay, so let, let's just kind of rewind a little bit. When I first went to college, um, I went as an accounting major. That wasn't going to work. I'm not a guy who can sit behind a desk and, and crunch numbers on a 24-7 basis. So I tried to get into the communications field because I love sports. Um, my career was done. I stopped playing football and I knew that I needed to stay in the sports field and um, I couldn't get into the field. It was closed in the major. So as time went on, I just stayed completely involved in it. Uh, always had those conversations with friends and everything as in depth as possible about sports. And they always said to me, you know, man, you've got a lot of knowledge. You need to share that knowledge. Well, when we hit 2020, um, I had previously bought a bunch of things that would help me start a podcast. And when we hit 2020, um, and I knew I was going to be out of coaching, my wife finally said to me, hey, why don't you try podcasting? So I talked to a couple of friends about it. Um, next thing you know, I put a show down, and um, I started doing Steeler stuff. And I started out calling my, my show uh, Steel City Nation. But what I found was there are a lot of people out there who uh, attribute themselves to Steel City Nation, and I couldn't build an audience because everybody – thought everything was about the Steelers. As I went along in my interviews and, and things like that, I was interviewing people outside of that box. I, you know, Chris Samuels, uh, you know, they're just a whole bunch of different people from different sports. And inevitably, I changed the name over to Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday. And it's been an interesting run ever since. I interview other podcasters. I interview writers. I interview, you know, TV personalities that do sports you know, sports personalities, as well as athletes. Um, one of my latest shows, and you'll love this one, a guy from Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, contacted me. He was a uh, two-time Olympic British fencer. No kidding. Yeah, he was the most interesting conversation because what do you know about fencing? I don't know how many of you out there know a lot about fencing, but that episode is fun to listen to. And he got into how there's three different blades that you can use and, you know, just the whole big thing about it and um 
it was just really interesting to talk to him. And so, you know, as my name got out there, I'm getting some people in like that. So that's where I'm at with my podcast. Well, so one of the things I really liked about what you're saying is you could be so different. And one of the things I learned early as a young broadcaster was if you can be different than what everybody does out there, you're going to be so farther ahead. Anybody, Mark, can talk about the obvious thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. I mean, you know, how many podcasts is there in this pod? Three, four, five million, too many to count. Yeah. Take count. Yeah. But how many people can go out there and come up with different ideas mm -hmm. and turn those over into what we call Grand Slams? And we're going to get into some baseball in a moment and, and be different. And it sounds like with your fencing show... And I imagine that your philosophy to separate you from a lot is to do a lot of different types of shows. Right, isn't it? right. I, I, I actually talked to somebody who's uh, uh, in Boston who has a very successful uh, podcasting network. And we had an hour and a half conversation about ways I could uh, help to grow my show and things I could do. And he said, don't be afraid to go outside of what you're doing, basically. Right. So I've had on a uh, ufologist. <laughs> I've had on a ghost hunter. Um, I had somebody who does optimizing for what we do with podcasting, building our network. I had coming, someone coming on who's a, a Bigfoot uh, uh, expert, you know. So I'm, I'm just trying to add some variety to it so it, it doesn't get stale. Like you said, we all can talk about sports. You probably read sports every day. I read sports every day. In fact, I know you do because I retweet it. But it's interesting to, to me, and I hope it is to others, to be able to listen to what other things are going on in the world. And, and I kind of went down that paranormal path. Yeah, what I've been able to do with the Tribune folks is, not only do we have our regular sports shows, but now we have other ones like No Limits, Real in the Rare, and other non-sports related type yeah, of content. Yeah. Because you cannot be a one trick pony in this business if you're looking to get to everybody. And I've learned that, and plus at this point in my life, I want to do other things so that people realize there's more to this guy than just being the sports stereotype. And I, and I can certainly appreciate totally where you're coming. Yeah. So with that said, how do you market your podcast? Social media. Okay. Social media. I've been looking for uh, an intern, somebody to help me out because I don't, I don't monetize it. I have not had the opportunity to monetize it. I've looked into it. But, um, you know, being a full-time teacher, a full-time father, helping coach my kids' team, being involved with my daughters yet, um, doing, uh, I actually do a total of three podcasts. <clears throat> um, it's hard for me to get out there and just really pound one of them or have any right. cash to pound, you know. And, and that's one of the big things people understand. If you want to get your podcast out there, you've got to get it recognized. You've got to build relationships. Right. Networking is so important. Right. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean... If you can't network, you're in trouble in this business. I've actually gone ahead and network in local groups here in Southern Florida, as well as go to national sports type of functions like the groups that I belong to and so forth. So sure. here we are, folks, on the but right by the Catskill Mountains, and I'm talking with Mark Meriday, and we are in Cooperstown, New York, folks. Please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, so not only can you see a lot of what we're doing with our regular interviews, but when we have an opportunity to go on site. Okay, Mark, here's the thing. The man upstairs said, we weren't doing a show together on StreamYard. Nothing against StreamYard, folks, but we were doing it here in person. Why are you in Cooperstown, New York, and am I very fortunate that we got to do this broadcast here? I feel blessed that we got to meet up here. Honestly, when I sent you that message, because we were going to try and connect uh, uh, virtually, um, it was it was kind of wild that we were both going to be here at the same time. My son's playing baseball here. Okay. He's playing at the Cooperstown Dream Park. Um, he got asked last year. He's 12 years old, and they have a tournament for 12-year-olds, and it's been one of the most amazing experiences for him. Now, his team's not winning, but that's not the bottom line for him because when he looks back at this in life, as many of you can understand, when he looks back at this in life, he's going to remember coming here, playing with a bunch of kids, and the whole experience, staying in a barracks, you know, going to the Hall of Fame, walking through town, all those things. And so we decided that we needed to give him that experience, to be honest with you. Well, you being a coach, you got to invest in your own. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about baseball heaven. I mean, all the field of dreams is great, got no problem. But this Cooperstown, it doesn't get me better than this. You think I'd be a madman driving 23 hours in a row 
Oh, I would anyways for those people that know what I am. I could have worn <laughs> my hat king of the road, but no, I decided to keep it clean here today with no cap, but it doesn't hurt to have some nice shade and a great scenery. Well, yeah, yeah. Cap. But yeah, Cooperstown is what it is. I mean, this is my third visit here, and this is my other half's first. So tell me, though, what, you know, we're going to be going to the Hall of Fame probably next week. I want to wait for the crowds to go sure, down a little bit so sure. I can enjoy the area. And we allocated like seven, eight days anyhow, so you can just take it in. And, and let's face it, what have you enjoyed the most about Cooperstown since you've been here? Well, aside from the baseball, yeah. just like you talked about the variety of different things that are here. I, I Okay, first of all, I read the facts about Cooperstown. William Cooper is the son of the guy who wrote The Grapes of Wrath, and he he's the one who founded Cooperstown. And I also came to find out we, like, we discovered microbrews during the pandemic. And Oma Gang, which is right outside of town, is uh, uh, they considered to be the renaissance finder for uh, microbreweries in the United States, which I thought was kind of neat. But just like the history here, um, it's that small town feel. And many people who come from the big city have no idea what it's like to be in a little town like this. It's been around for, you know, several hundred years. Yeah, you know, you never know what life has in store, but as I've had an opportunity to go ahead and drive around the entire area, whether it's Springfield, I know we'll get to Oneana at some point. They used yeah. to have a New York team here with the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees. Unfortunately, that went away because of the fact that they contracted the teams, yeah. and many of them went away. But I know that as I've looked here, and who knows what ever happened, I would love to move here and at least be a, a part-time resident because you have the lake and you also have the actual homes on it and the mountain in the country it's so serene Absolutely. out here isn't it? it is like if you're in the city of or the city the town of cooperstown and you go one street over from the main town and you look to your left there's the lake like right. it's that close to the middle of the town which is pretty cool and then we pass another lake uh on our way to uh the place we're staying at right you know, so. well there's two major lakes in here one of them lake Ostego. I don't recall the other one by name, but I know it's another complimentary lake, which is great. Yeah. And if you've driven around the whole area, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, I think when you look at Cooperstown in general, now, I, again, I'm going to be spending more time there next week. But uh, at least on the surface, our goal is to hit Double Day Field. Have you had a chance to play on Double Day Field? He has not played on Double Day Field, but we went in and took pictures. Did you? You know, it's, it's really neat. The, the very first time we came up here... Uh, w this is only our second, but the first time we came up here, Pete Rose was actually here signing autographs. Yeah, how about that? Pete Rose figures he's not going to get in the Hall of Fame, but he might as well go out there and yeah. clean up on his autographs. Yeah. More power to him, and I won't even get into, well, maybe I will in a moment, but when you think about the three places that stand out memorabilia, I think Shootless Joe Jackson has one, got Yastrzemski, Carl Yastrzemski has one, yep. and, and Mickey Mantle's place, which... Yep. I was at, and I, I let me tell you, I spent a lot of money in sports memorabilia. I assume that your credit card limit isn't that high. We're going to get sucked into that, are you? No, no. The wife, the wife puts the kibosh on me buying too much. She, she looks at us on a regular basis. My son got into sports cards, and uh, <laughs> she's constantly, she's like, here's your budget, and you've got to follow this. And so we, we have fun. We go a little over once in a while, but, you know, that's... Uh, I love the memorabilia part of it. I really do. Yeah, that's the part I'm probably dreading uh, the least. Knowing I'm putting it out till later in the week is what I'm doing. And my wife is like yours. She's pretty smart with the budget. Yeah. But we also know an opportunity to get something pretty good. So we're hoping maybe to incorporate a little Christmas uh, budget into this so it doesn't look as bad. But, well, you know, how it is. Uh, the first time, uh, time I was here, I ended up getting Hydra Stone statues of Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, uh, Lou Gehrig. Wow. I mean, Hydra Stone statues. Mickey Mantle, Don Manningly, the list goes on and on. So I, at least my wife won't ever about me going hog wild. If I were ever going to look for a hydrostone statue, if I ever found it, it might be Al Kaline, but I doubt it. So. Let's talk about baseball in general now. Uh, you know, I don't think I could ever come here for a Hall of Fame induction because it would just be outrageous. And I think, to me, it's just better off coming later and yeah, appreciate it. But when you talk about baseball in general, okay, now we're going to get into the sport for just a moment. What are your thoughts of potentially with David Ortiz going in here, whether this will probably open the door for steroid guys to get in? I, To be honest with you, I've never had a problem with that. My feelings about it have always been you still have to play the game. You can shoot up all you want, but you still have to go out there and swing the bat, catch the ball, throw the ball. I just never felt like 
if, if you want to put a little asterisk besides Barry Bonds' name, that's perfectly right. fine, okay? Besides Clemens' name, that's fine. But their feats that they did, they still had to perform. You know, and, and I don't care who agrees with me or who doesn't. I, I respectfully understand that. But I, I think that their accomplishments in and of themselves are phenomenal. I couldn't do it. You could shoot me up with steroids and, and pound weights, and I, I couldn't do what they did. You know, they're still remarkable athletes. Well, you talk about Pete Rose signing autographs, okay? And now we are going to talk a little bit about Pete. You have a society now where there's a lot more gambling involved. He made mistakes, I believe, what, betting on his team? I believe yeah, he did. Yeah. And we know that there's a gray area in the bylaws in baseball. You can't bet or you're permanently banned. I get that. And we all know that there's a lot of scandals and some of the best players are out. But with that said, okay, now that gambling has become a part of sports society, do you think that at some point Pete Rose will get in? Or the second part of that question, will they bring him in when he's posthumously? Yeah, I, I would think he'll come in when he's when he's gone. Yeah. Honestly, it, it, I mean, they are never going to give him that satisfaction. You have too many old sports writers who are still casting ballots right. for, the, for the Baseball Hall of Fame, and those guys just don't have a wider view at the criteria that some of these guys should have. I... I to me, when I looked at Ortiz's numbers and a lot of things he did, yeah, he had a great career. But, you know, I, I had this conversation. I was in the baseball card shop in town, and I had this conversation with the owner, who obviously is extremely baseball knowledgeable, and a young man who was sitting there. And they they said, do you think Garrett Cole, we, we got into Garrett Cole for some reason. And they said, do you think Cole's going to have Hall of Fame numbers? And I said, no, I don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because hitters today either swing for the fence or they bat 250 or lower, and they're considered to be – great players okay how many guys do you see hitting 300 today back in the day 300 was the standard you had to hit 300 you needed to be able to do that in order to be recognized and get that contract today it's not like that so all these guys cold is striking out I appreciate that and I know he still has to perform what he performs but you know I don't think he is pitching like a Seaver did I don't even think he's pitching like Maddox did who's one of my all-time favorite baseball players well the numbers, when you talk about regular numbers, are hitting over 300. Yeah. A lot. You got 500 home runs, you're over a lot, 3,000 yeah. hits. And you know what? Those are, unfortunately, those type of things are starting to drop off and off. So you wonder if the new bar is 250 wins versus 300. We don't know. I know I personally would love to see Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire in. Absolutely. And I'll tell you the reason why I'd love to see those guys in. It's the fact that when baseball had that damaging labor stoppage in 94, yeah. you lost the World Series. Well, you know, at least Cal Ripken Jr. got in because of consecutive games. But Sammy and Mark McGuire helped bring this sport back, and people were spending money at the concession stands, you know, when, well, for brat batting practice. Yeah. And that home run chase, whether you like it or not, yeah. with all the asterisks, it'll be surrounded by all that. But Sammy and Mark McGuire definitely went out there and saved the game of baseball at a time when it desperately needed. Now, will that ever come to Stay tuned. Maybe we'll debate it down the road if it ever happened. But you are right. Put them in there with an asterisk and then have another wing. These are the stereo thing because you cannot take away the history of the great American past. No, that, I mean, that you, you, you're right. The, this is the era that this was going on, and it was perfectly fine during that era, wasn't it? I mean, nobody said anything during that right. era. It was years down the road that somebody, you know, just like the spin rate thing with uh, with pitchers, that was so big last year. How much do you hear about that today? Right. Not, not at all. I don't read anything about it at all today. So... You know, they pick and choose where they want to go with what they want to highlight as far as controversial uh, issues in the sport. I think the controversial issue that's never covered is the salary cap, okay? Right. And you do that however you want to, but being a lifelong Pittsburgh Pirate fan, being a little kid when Stargell played for the Pirates and watching him hit the home run and beat the Baltimore Orioles, it has been abysmal from 79 to this very day. And I know they had a little blip on the radar in the mid 20 teens, but you know, it, it's abysmal. You've got an owner who cares about one thing, one thing only, and it, okay, that's fine. But I would want an owner, or I would want to play for an owner who at least has the passion to put a product on the field that's going to be competitive and have a chance at winning a world championship. All right, well, you're a Pittsburgh guy, so to speak, or at least you're talking about, or let's we'll talk about Pittsburgh, okay? Okay. And that's Barry Bonds. Yeah. First of all, okay, in my opinion, one of the things that kept him out of the Hall of Fame is he's a very arrogant individual. Definitely. And you do not go out there and bite the hand that will hopefully feed you and induct you into the Hall of Fame 
And I had an opportunity when the Marlins took on the Giants. I was at the game where Pudge Rodriguez saved at, at that play at the plate. And as a result, the Giant, the Marlins went on to win the World Series and the Giants went home. And I had an opportunity to sit in a, a Barry Bonds press conference. I decided to go to the Marlins locker room and enjoy the celebration. Why did I pass that opportunity to be in front of Bonds? Personality. You know what, Barry? I know your dad was a heck of a player. Your godfather is Willie Mays. But Barry, don't be stupid, okay? Yeah. We're here to help you out. But, you know, you also have to make sure that when you do uh, help a guy out, that, you know, one hand feeds the other. Yeah. Now, I'm over at the University of Miami Hurricanes Media Day. And I got to tell you a little story about Mario Cristobal, okay? And he, he's really an interesting person. I'm hoping to work with Hurricanes a little bit more. But, we, but I was at that game. Mario Cristobal jokes around with the reporter. Well, I don't know if I give you the answer that gets you a lot of clicks. <laughs> and, and that was just so funny. I could not help it. You know what, Mario, you get it. Here's a guy that left the University of Oregon to come back to Miami yeah. Hurricanes. You're trying to get him back on track. Yeah. But let's face what, what it's come down. How many clicks, how many people you're going to get to go out there and do what you've got to do. But, but Barry Bonds simply self-destructed because he didn't play the game right. And we're talking about game, but he didn't. You have to play the popularity contest. Just be nice to the guys that are giving you state publicity. And we all know that he was a heck of a player in Pittsburgh. He was able to hit for power as well as speed. Sure. And all of a sudden, those numbers held it the other way when certain body development started to transform a little. They shifted him toward the power side. I love the game where it was, you know, a guy like Canseco was highlighted, 30 for 30 guy, 40 for 40 guy. I thought that was a great baseball game. You don't see bunts today. You don't see stolen bases. And that's part of the yeah, – I'd rather see that than a home run – than 10 home runs in a game. You look at what the Angels did two nights ago or last night. They they literally lost a game after hitting seven home runs, eight to seven. Like, how does that happen? How do you have Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, who actually is, has a debil debilitative – injury now but how do you have guys like that who are playing top-notch baseball and you can't win like what's the problem but going back to bonds real quick um i'll never forget we were i was at the stadium with a buddy of mine and we were going up to seats we were riding in the elevator bonds was in the elevator with us myself my buddy and bonds and we had a baseball with us we said barry you mind signing a baseball he's like i don't sign in an elevator and he just stood there like this okay and i was wow. like well that, that's that's very very, very yes. bonds of you, you know, and he also, when he played in Pittsburgh, he weighed about 160, 170 pounds, you know, <laughs> and you saw what he, what he looked like at the end of the day, so. While well, you talk about him versus Sammy Sosa, I worked with Sammy Sosa in 1987, I was the director of public relations with the Gastonia Rangers, Class State South Atlantic League affiliate, yeah. and Sammy and I worked together, we had a great old time yeah. together, so when the opportunity came where he, but he was in town with the Florida Marlins at Joe Robbie Stadium. I was asking the tough care. First, I'd like to talk to you. You know, like, I'm really nuts. No, I, you don't understand. Oh, I'm a term. It's not applicable here. So I said, you know, let me tell you, I work with Barry. I did what you did. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, with Sammy, rather. They got me thinking about Barry. Well, it's okay. They both did a lot of homework. But talk about Sammy. So I said, all right. I got an idea. I'm taking it. Hey, Sammy, remember me? Hey, give me the little big, wide, so, so smile. I don't care about your stupid cord back. I'm not yeah. talking about that. So, yeah. hey, what are you doing? Sammy, look me, give me a little beautiful smile. Like, I remember you, my friend. You yep. had my back way back when he was 150 pounds, 160 pounds. Yep. kid coming out, too. And you know what? I looked at the woman. I said, now do you believe me? So then she pulled me aside. Okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah. So what she ended up doing is she arranged a one-on-one -on -one interview with me over in the Cubs locker room at Joe Robbie Stadium. Sammy and I spent 15 20 minutes together, you know, see if I could have taken a picture of them, but you got to be careful when you're a media guy that you're yeah. not doing anything unethical sure. or they'll give you a hard time. But as it turns out, Sammy did not forget who I was. Okay, we had a great conversation, proved the point to that Cubs woman. And again, you know what? These are certain things about players. We can get on and on about stories, which I won't. I, I can tell you right now, I got three p friends that are Hall of Famers in the media wing with Ernie Harwell, Tom Gage. And the other one is Joe Falls. And when I have the opportunity, it may take me two days in this hall, I don't know. But the reality is, folks, history here in Cooperstown yeah. is unbelievable. So as we wrap up this show, Mark, okay, let's once again recap some of your experience of how fulfilling this is for you, your family, just to be here. And do you ever plan to come back at some point now that you've got it off your bucket list? I'm sure at some point we'll come back. Um, you know, 
my son and I do a lot of minor league baseball games, more than major league baseball games. And uh, as we pick different sections to take a tour of and go to games along the way, I'm sure we'll make another stop through here at some point. Um, our biggest thing uh, that we're going to take away from here is just the sheer joy of watching our son play in this experience. Hey, my kid may never play baseball again after this, which I'm pretty sure he's going to. But, you know, this, this has got to be a highlight of a young kid's career because there's such a small percentage of guys who who make it to the majors and there's a small percentage of guys who get the opportunity to play even minor league baseball that, uh, um, you know, give, just being able to share this with him and give him this experience is is very gratifying to me as, and my wife as, as parents. Well, you know what's so interesting is I know one of these days I'd love to see Mickey Lolich get inducted. And I know that Universal DH is a part of the game, and I, I'm with you. Yeah. Small ball, bunting strategies yeah. out, and the lack of complete games. So it'll be interesting to see what other inductees are going to be a part of the landscape. But to me, Cooperstown, to me, is heaven in baseball. And I'm going to send a note to everybody on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all my social media outlets, okay? From my mouth with Mark as my witness and my wife doing an incredible job being a videographer, okay? I'm out here. I will find you. If you're worth my while to come to your venue, we're going to do this same old thing because I'm going to tell you, this is what it's all about. Everybody can follow each other. But to me, to be able to make friends in a time where you have the ability electronically and technologically to do it, my opportunity to spend time with Mark Meriday, to me, is priceless. So all you people on social media, be aware, the Motor City Mad Month as they say in college football, I am coming to your city. And no, I'm not going out there to go ahead and apply for singing because I'd probably break a lot of Memorex glasses and all you guys would go deaf listening to it anyway. But the Motor City Mad Mouth meets M Square, Mark Meredith. I know a lot of Marks. Uh, double M, my dad, Mike Morganroth is one. We got Mark Mancini, one of my co-hosts, Mark Meredith. MM, that's a common denominator. And this is the latest one here in Cooperstown. So with that said, Mark, as we wrap this show up, I want everybody to know how they can get a hold of you. And once again, I should point out, Mark Meriday does a great job helping the South Florida Tribune promote our platform. And we are eternally grateful to this guy. And you know what? Mark Meriday's don't grow on trees, but I hope everybody will find out. Maybe they should get on board and come on our train. So go ahead, let everybody know. That well, you want. can check me out at originalsportspodcast.com. Actually, I flipped over to PodPage right now. So it's podpage.originalsportspodcast.com. And you can also find my show... Uh, you can find it on any podcast platform out there. I've been on it for three years. I have 111 episodes out there now. Um, go back and listen to some of those older episodes. I've had Rocky Blyer, Ike Taylor, like I said, uh, Sean Springs. I, I just had a number of different people on there. And uh, you can also find me on every social media platform out there. TikTok, YouTube. My son does my TikToks. He knows he knows how to do a great job with that. So you can find me everywhere. Well, me, TikTok folks is a work in progress. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I have an account, but I do a little Instagram. But, you know, as far as we're concerned, please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. A lot of great episodes coming up. I do a lot of short videos, long videos, on-site videos. You name it, they come from everywhere. So please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel and share it with everybody. Uh, also, you can find us on www.southfloridatribune.com. You can find all our information there. You can also go ahead and find us on all podcast platforms as well. And, of course, tri at Twitter, at Tribune South. That's where I met my friend Mark Meridai. And because of Twitter, Mark Meridai had the opportunity to broadcast here at the Red Carpet Inn here in Cooperstown, New York, on the foothills of the Catskills. So, well, Mark, it's been a pleasure yes, sir. being able to do this Give with this you. Give this guy a listen, man. I'll tell you, this guy here is great. You got two people here enjoying the Cooperstown experience, and only in baseball heaven can two people like us connect, or at least it worked out beautifully that way. So on behalf of Mark Meriday, my name is Scott Morgan Roth of Motor City Madmouth. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of the Sports Exchange from Cooperstown, New York. And we look forward to the next episode. Mark, have a great time. You too. And we have a lot to do. And what a privilege it is. So thank you very much Absolutely. for uh, working us in your schedule. Anytime. Anytime. We'll be in touch. God bless again, partner. Thanks.